Locker Room back at Heidelberg United Stock Club, or oh, oh, Alexandros, my erstwhile and, and Mr. Blake. elegant looking uh, co host, Doug Hodgson, okay, wearing okay. the singly gay shirt he has worn. We'll get the backstory of that very, very shortly. Doug, welcome, and not that there's anything wrong with that. And on my right is somebody, I see, I get all, I get all funny so because right? these guys are the people that I grew up with, but. Uh, if you're ever out Olympic Village Way, have a look at uh, down one end of the ground and up the other end of the ground. One end is the Gary Cole end. A lot of man love going out to you, Miss you guys. Miss we, you. We, we, we want to see you here. We the JO here off. now. But at the other end of the ground, the Jeff Oliver end, and no, it's, he's here with us. Oh my God. Good to see you guys. Hey, no, pleasure. JO, good, good to see you again, mate. Thanks for the invitation. Much appreciated. It, uh, it's, uh, it genuinely is an honour to have you aboard because, um, you know, certainly from, from my point of view, and I think we talked about this, I actually remember seeing your very first game in, in the um, Golden Black at uh, Olympic Village, uh, sorry, Olympic Park number two. It was a practice game. Practice game? Yeah. Um, and for some reason I was standing in the, uh, in the um, track watchers tower. But I, I don't know why I remember it, but... Uh, <laughs> Did he, so, did he, did he, did he start? He was a, he, was he? no, he was a super staff from the day he walked on the paddock. Jeff, welcome, what are you doing? What are you doing in life? I've uh, been doing very things. Uh, still involved in the game, as I said a bit earlier. Uh, been involved for a long time, doing a bit of uh, coaching in the VPL. Uh, obviously, I was involved with Holderberg for the last couple of years and, and moved on uh, doing that. And then we're just setting up a couple of businesses, a bit of a goalkeeper academy, which we're about to start in the next couple of weeks. So, Do you give it a plug? so yeah, if you've uh, got any young, inspiring goalkeepers, uh, keep uh, keep an eye out. We'll be doing some advertising and obviously having on Facebook and a whole range of different other things. So. Um, once I get a bit more detail, you might drop a, a couple of words for us, lads, and uh, we'll go from there. So. Yeah, happily do so. And, and look, if you weren't around to see this bloke play the game, you, oh, honestly, you, you miss something special, an extraordinary talent, uh, and one that uh, graced Olympic Village for, for many, many years. Yeah, I was lucky. I mean, I, we played uh, we played at the Olympic Park in the early days, and uh, number one predominantly, then number two. I actually walked past it a couple of weeks ago and they knocked it down there. They knocked it down and revamping it for the Collingwood Football Club. But, and then obviously we made the move out to, to the village and had some really good times and had some great games. For the records, Jeff, how many games at Hardaway? How many? I think it was just a smidge under 285. Okay? 285? 285. Uh, I think from all reports on the games uh, holder for the, for the club. That's, yeah, I think so that's... I was here close on uh, the first thing I, I arrived at the end of 1978 as a, a young lad, 17 and a half, wasn't quite in my uh, 18th birthday. 1978, I've got a nice little picture behind us. Oh, yeah, just that's here that's and that's number, Yeah, it's 1980s, two, years, two, two, years, two years later. So I arrived in 78 and John Margrues was coached at that first time and then in 79, I sat on the bench for a whole year and kicked a ball, uh, apart from practice games, because the club then signed uh, Jakub at that time. And then in 1980, Jakub then made the, the big transfer to Derby County, and then I got my chance. First game was at uh, Bruce Stadium against Canberra in a league game, and then we had to go back, I think, three days later for a cup game, in that, and then, as I say, the rest is pretty much history. So we were at Heidelberg, can we talk just for the people that might not remember J.O. and I was one of the lucky, not lucky for me, but probably unlucky for J.O. playing in front of him. Well, how many games did we go to Victoria? Did we have any for Australia? Can we talk us through the career, Jeff? Oh, career, yeah, I played, uh, go back, I played for Victoria at under 16s for yep. a year, and then at that time they had an under 18 competition, so I played in the under 18s for two years. Uh, I then played for the Australian youth team, which was the first youth team ever, uh, there was a, the inaugural youth team, yeah. uh, which was under 19, so I played with guys like uh, Eddie Krinchevich, uh, Peter Scottless, um, George Christopoulos, guys like that, Alan Davidson, so we are all yeah. part of that. So I played in the first under 19s, uh, and then there wasn't an under 23s then, and then I was lucky enough to play to make the... Um, Australia B team, that was back in 1984 when they brought out a whole range of different, like Udinese come out, Glasgow Rangers come out, Juventus come out, all those guys come out. So I played in the B team and, and then I was number four choice in 84 and then by the 1985 I had gone from four to two yep. and I was uh, I had one year under Terry Gritty, I played in the 85 uh, qualifiers, was lucky enough as a lot of people still Remember my uh, the game at the Ramagan in Israel in '85, where I came in after 
35 minutes, and that was pretty much sent me up then from sort of... That was when the gaffer was sent off, and he actually watched the game. Yeah, the behind the bar bike. Yeah, yeah, and then uh, Ian Gray was running shuttles messages <laughs> back to Tomo when Tomo, and unfortunately Tomo's passed on, but yeah, and then we, we come out and we beat the 2-1, the first time Cosy scored just after half time, Dodie Mitchell scored, and then I basically then played until 1990. So I, had, I played 30, 37 full internationals, and then I played 17 other internationals and also played, lucky enough to play. In that, in that generation, Victoria had a very, very good state team. Yes. And we played a lot when Lenny McKendry was involved and a few other boys were involved as coaches. So I was lucky, I sort of done the gamut. I didn't play for state in the younger years because uh, I didn't take up goalkeeper until I was 14. So. Yeah. So very light, of, mate. Mate, that's yeah, it was just yeah, it was I played everywhere and it just happened that I I wanted to play in goal and nobody would let me, so I ended up going up an age and I played under fifteens and then So you guys out there that didn't let him? Yeah, in your yeah, words, is the Australian <laughs> international yeah, now. Thank you very much. Leave for, that uh, there with that. you. Yeah, so every, yeah, so that was that pretty much a nutshell and then I was lucky enough uh, I played uh, Played for a club called Albion Rovers in the old in first division, and then they went to Premier League for a year, and then I came to Heidelberg, and then after Heidelberg, I had uh, four good years of bowling, and then I had one year of football. So that was pretty much my career in a nutshell. Now, before we press on, I'm going to put you on the spot with some some one word answers, so you better just be yeah, ready, on yeah. your leg. But just quickly, what, what I'm really thankful for, apart from Dougie looking resplendent in his uh, Sheffield United top. <coughs> Um, would be uh, we've got some sponsors on board, which is fantastic. So we're going to try and do them justice throughout the show. TJ Financial Consultants, and God knows, don't I need them right now? If you're looking for finance overdrafts, lease ring TJ Financial Consultants on zero four two five eight one zero seven six one and ask for John Dimsis. That number again for TJ Financial Consultants zero four two five eight ten. 761. There are several other, other people that we will acknowledge throughout the course of this magnificent broadcast, groundbreaking, history making, if you will, because we've got Jeff Olver, the great man. There's a Jeff Olver end. Uh, do you think of all that? Oh, no, actually, I'm not being facetious, Jeff. But you, you, when you think about the idea that this club is, is what, 40, 50 years of, uh, of old, oh, and uh, there have been some since, and, and you know, we, we had the reunion night the other night, there have been some remarkable players grace this particular club. When you come back here, now, you know, with that perspicacity of age and maturity, and you see the Jeff Olver end, how does that make you feel? Yeah, I mean, recognition's good in any, any form. I think, uh, I mean, I, I always say to people, you know, Heidelberg gave me an opportunity. If it wasn't for Heidelberg, you know, I wouldn't have, you know, Dougie's alluded to it earlier, I wouldn't have played for Australia. You know, I, people forget when I joined the club, you know, I was playing in a team at that time, I had seven internationals in the starting group, and that didn't, didn't include me, Charlie Yankos. Uh, then we had a couple of, you know, obviously, uh, unfortunately, Arthur McMillan's passed, but Arthur McMillan was there, Jim Tansy was there, Paddy Bannon. So these were guys that could have probably been international players and weren't. And then, so I had a fantastic round, and I, I've always uh, appreciated what Heidelberg's done. I mean, we've had our differences over the years, but, you know, it, it's a bit like... Uh, you know, it's a bit like your family, you have an argument and then you make up and you come back. So I really appreciated what Heidelberg's done. I've been back a few times as a coach here. I mean, as I said, I was involved the last two years as assistant coach to George, but I have been the head coach here uh, in previous times. So the club's been done a lot for me and, and I'd like to think by that I, you know, reciprocated that with the club. It's funny you say that, Jeff, like the club, and I'm, I'm the same as you. Heidelberg gave me an opportunity too, but... You done that, they, you they done never that. gave me an opportunity. You didn't get an opportunity? No, no, didn't, 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 didn't. We, might, we might have to get Blakey out of the picture. <laughs> I mean, that could be the one. They so, gave you the opportunity to tour. I remember, you know, folks might know this, but I remember Blakey used to follow us. He was like a groupie. He used to follow us all the games. <laughs> Man love Coley. Yeah, yeah, there is not a lot I wouldn't have done for Gary. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I remember, I forget your mate's name. I, I, squash. Squash? Yeah. yeah and Squash, uh, and you guys used to follow us around, and they, they were fanatical supporters. So, you know, and we, you appreciate things like that, you know, yes, and so the club still, meant a lot to you that, in those days I as well. I still remember going up to St George, Barton Park, just near the airport, yeah. and, and uh, we actually took both ends and one terrace in one day because we were the only people <laughs> there. <laughs> 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 we took the north end. <laughs> <laughs> but you obviously, but you've worked hard. That's what I'm trying to get. We've got an opportunity. Yeah, well, no, you know, know, work and it's, uh, I, I don't want to sound old-fashioned, but nothing's given to you. You know, you've got opportunity. I, I say to a lot of the young kids that I coach and even senior players, opportunity is given to you. It's what you do with the opportunity. Some, 
you know, and uh, you know, I wasn't blessed with a lot of natural ability, but ideally, I was lucky. I had a couple of good mentors. One of my mentors was obviously my father, yeah. and then I was lucky enough between the ages of 22 and 24 when I was at the club that the club brought Jack Riley. Well, Jack Riley at that time I think was 39. Yeah. They brought him in as the goalkeeping coach and the second keeper. But Jack then passed on, you know, so much experience to me and, and work ethic that then from 24 to virtually nearly 30, I ended up being in the national team. But it's all about opportunity and taking the opportunity. I mean, I was lucky enough to watch the, the guys last night, the soccer guys last night. But when I was in the national team, we had Frank Arrow would only give you two opportunities. So if you didn't perform in those two opportunities, you basically, you, you know, the black tanks to come out and your name was crossed. So it's a little bit different these days. Players tend to get a little bit more of opportunity. But in those days, in, in the old NSL, there was a lot, a lot of good players fighting around, a lot of good goalkeepers. I would love, hopefully, but we've only got a brief amount of time, which is such a shame because I think it, Doug, you'd have to agree, Jeff's probably had the most storied history of any player that sure. we've had. Um, so there's so much I'd, I'd like to address with you, particularly that one you know that we were talking about, the, the old NSL. But um, just a couple of things, given your, your illustrious career with the Socceroos, with Heidelberg and the NSL and everything, just a couple of you know, quick answers. All right, who was the most influential coach along the journey? Who do you look back on and say, well, I think that really affected uh, my development as a player in a profound way? Uh, I, I think in terms of being before his time as a guy called Lenny McKendry, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, most players you speak to now when you sit back and become a coach, he was different. Most coaches these days, I was talking to somebody about it the other day, most coaches when they coach they work from the back to the, the front. Lenny was completely opposite. He used to work from the front to the back. So in those, in those days we had obviously, you know, Gary Cole, a legend of the club, and Jamie Payton, and they were worked on all the time. So I think between them, which is unheard of now, I think Coley one year knocked in 25 or 28 goals and Jamie had knocked in something like around 20, 22 goals, which is unheard of now when people knock in 15 goals and have a year. So Lenny was, there's been different people along the journey. Um, you know, Frank Garrock was a great influence you know, in regards to the national team. A lot of people only seen the facade of him going crazy, but he was very articulate in terms of analysing opponents and, and, and putting things in place. Hence, you know, I was lucky enough to play at the 88 Olympics and we, we had a game against Yugoslavia. As a what, first game, first game. and we won one at the end. And then in that time, and that was when Yugoslavia was a whole, before it got yeah. cut up. So you had players like Boban, you had all these world-class players. And Frank, had, we'd gone there the previous year for the, to Korea for the, the Korean Cup. And he, and he actually said, boys, we'll be back here in 12 months. And he laid plans for us to get to that point. And as it turned out, we ended up qualifying and, and we got some great results, you know. In your career, come on, Sorry, in Ken. your career, can you paint me the biggest, the best, what's been the best moment of your career? The one been? that you could have back, back now. What's been, what's you the go back there, you can journey, journey Give me back, two, can back, we go two? Go time. Australia, well, what, it's quite it's quite to me, local. It, it. local and international. No, what I, what I'd love to have back is is be able to walk into change rooms and have the bands with the boys. That Whether that was, whether it's with the national team, or whether it's in uh, a Heidelberg jumper, or uh, as I said, I did play for Berlin and had four great years there. That's the thing I miss. The, you can never, as a coach, you can never reciprocate that at all. I mean, to, to, uh, just uh, to diverse a little bit, you know, I, I was lucky enough, we put a team together in, in 2009 to play in the World Masters, and we ended up calling ourselves the Older Roos. Mm. And then that team, there was Charlie Ankos, uh, Paul Wade, um, Kim on Teledoros, Franny Waratifi, Wally Sabor, Grand, all these guys I played with. And it wasn't just the football, and, and the evidence for me about the change room was that the last game, we finished the last game, and we were all sitting in the change room and nobody wanted to leave, because we knew as soon as we walked out the change rooms, that was the end. So for me, what I miss is I miss the change room, I miss the banter, I, I was saying to Dougie a bit earlier, I'm playing in a charity match in a couple of weeks, I'm 51 now, and I'm lucky That's enough that I'm the only still uh, Victorian goalkeeper can still walk, and so I get, I get a hit. <laughs> so, and I just go for you know. Last year we had guys like Ned Zelich in there, Stevie Horvath, Danny Tiara, Salas, Theo Salomon, Jimmy Campbell, Jimmy Rooney, all. But I just go in. So, if I could re replicate anything, Doug, yeah. would be just a, a good dressing room. I was in some bad dressing rooms, but most of the dressing rooms I was Come in. Come on, you just can't. Yeah, you can't. Yeah. It's like the night we had a couple of weeks ago at, at the Heidelberg function. I mean, uh, and I call it the Brotherhood. You yeah. know, you just. You don't have to see each other all the time, but you can pick up. I got, you know, it makes it sense. Best safe. Can we have a best, best safe? We can in a minute. Oh, sorry, we've, got a, sorry. we've got a, you know, no, because I, I like the way you're going tonight and I appreciate oh, your I some some intelligent questions, Richard. 
you know, Doug Hodgson making intelligent commentary. Is Doesn't have enough to make sure it's recorded. We're hearing it live tonight. EPDM commercial. Any idea what I'm talking about? No. Well, I'm about to tell you. Is your home or business needing some renovations or extensions? Yes, very much so. Okay, if they are, if you're like me and your house is falling down around you, no, no idea how to repair it, I have no handyman skills whatsoever. No. Ring EDPM Commercial on 0410 That's 0410-968513 for a free quote. And if it's free, it's for me. So I'll be ringing them straight after the show tonight. Jeff Oldrest, a special guest, the best uh, save. Jeff? Uh, You've got one. You can't yeah, have probably for being recognised, probably the sale made in Israel at the Ramadan in 85. The, the, basically, in a nutshell, I was going one way and Alan Davidson was coming towards the goal. Dave had decided, I called for it. Again, we were playing in front of 70,000 people where you couldn't yeah. hear, hear each other. And he decided to hit it. So I was actually going one way and, and somehow. I was, you know, obviously the older I get the story, the better the story gets. I managed to change direction, got a hand to it, and then most people sort of, you know, because my international career could have been over after three games. So I'd gone on and, and fluffed my lines, so to speak. My international career would have been over three. I was then lucky enough to go and play another 50 months. Well, I can so. vouch for that now, Blakey, because I actually played for Frankston Pines. Jeff Oliver was in goals. And I have to admit, up front, and I've connected this, well, I've never forgot it, because I've connected this ball, and I have to admit, it's the first time I was going towards goal, so I was happy. I think it's going in. And I've got a picture in my head, and I've never forgot it. It was on the far end. I've got a J.O. at full flight. He wasn't going to get it. And his body flicked. And I don't know if it's an art, but obviously being coach now, he'll tell you. The body, and he raised his body probably another three or four inches, and it went over the bar. I can, Jeff, I can still see it. It's still in there. But your body, it flicked your body and you got more height. I was probably disappointed I gave away a corner there, Doug. You should have helped. That's another story for another day. Oh, and just while we're talking about sponsors very quickly, Boost Juice. Boost Juice, Doncaster, make sure you're down there at Shopping Town. Come and visit us. Ask them, call my name. For the guys that are on there, $2 discount this week. Make sure you say Doug Hodgson, Heidelberg United. Alexandros, show. Oh, $2 well, Alexandros, the locker room. $2 off. And just by the way, my daughter's got very discerning taste. She swears by Boost Juice, Doug, and that's, that's the absolute truth. That's the nicest thing I'm ever going to say to you. Jeff. Thank you. Jeff. Jeff Olver, special guest. I am. He's here. Oh. Very excited. I thank you. I know. I don't mean to revert to, to you know some sort of slavish. What, what was I a groupie? I don't understand. I'll discuss that. No, you were a very keen supporter. I was a very keen supporter. I uh, I got arrested for the cause once. That's a whole other story. Sorry for that. Um, Jeff. Okay, you, you are now the um, the selector of the all-time uh, best team, both players you played with, players you played against. Who are the first three players that come to mind that you would select at their prime tomorrow for the first eleven? That's a, that's nearly, nearly one. I got five seconds. One. Nearly, count the five. Nearly impossible. Uh, Two. From a defensive point of view, probably I don't put him in. Charlie Ancos is a good mate. Three. In terms of two creative players, I mean, I ran into one of them last night. Probably got like, if Oscar Crino was around today, he would be a superstar and a multi-millionaire. Yeah. Um, and probably another guy that I played with, uh, uh, nicknamed the Crab, and did have a few years here at Hollywood, was uh, Mickey Peterson. So, yep. in terms of, um, I believe before their time, um, you know, I played, I mean, the, the players I played with was just, you know, in the national, the guys like Farina and Mitchell and Cosmina and even uh, what I call Pretty Boy Slater, um, <laughs> you know, so, you know, the players I played You're with. There, Robbie. You know, so th there's so many. I was lucky to play in an era which I think. You know, some of the greatest players were ever produced by this country. Let's get let's let's get on to that rule. And I know we have this discussion on a regular basis. And it sounds like a, you know grumpy old men that, that, that looking back at overly fondly at, at things. But we did have the discussion outside before uh, the show, but, uh, probably on, on two levels. Um, first of all, the, 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 the dismantling of the old NSL, which uh, certainly from my point of view, I, I found that. Uh, well, uh, untimely, uh, probably wrongly handled, and, and really offensive to a lot of wonderful people. And on the other level too, we talk about uh, the way that the A League is promoted, and kudos for uh, the authorities that promote the game now. But it's almost as if the old NSL didn't didn't exist; that it wasn't relevant. And yet, I would argue that probably I could name a dozen club teams of the different areas that would walk out in the A League tomorrow and win the competition by 10, 10 points. 
I would disagree with you. I just think uh, there, that is disappointing that there, there isn't recognition. I mean, the Socceroos um, probably, apart from when the FFA have just come in, didn't get the recognition they've got. So they've, they've addressed that to some degree where the former Socceroos now get looked after a lot better than they used to. But I do agree with you that, you know, when you look at some of the players that played in, you know, the South Melbourne teams, the, the Holbrook teams, the Preston teams, the Sydney Olympic teams, the Sydney Croatia teams, all those, I mean, you talk like guys like Ozzy Jarkov and, and, and people like that who were fantastic players. So I, that disappoints me. I mean, you know, you've got guys like Serge Melter and, and people like Alex Tame and all that played. You know, Serge Melter, I think, played 450 games yeah. that You know, no recognition of that, you know. but they, Damien Laurie were 200 odd. Correct. And, and, and so many, you know, so that, that hopefully, hopefully in time they'll, they'll be able. I know that, you know, they're, they're trying to rebuild something and I understand some of the reason for doing it, but you can't forget where you came from. And I think that's very, very important that if there wasn't the old SL, and I mean, the people forget that Frank Lowe was involved in the old SL way back in 1976 when he was involved with Sydney Yakawa. Now, for whatever reason, Frank then decided to get out, whether it was because of the politics or, excuse my language, the bullshit, then that's fine. But he was involved initially in, in you know, with the, the old Sydney Yakawa with Cosy and Steve kind of know they had their great team. So, Hopefully one day they'll sit back and say, well, we've got that part this right of the game. Now we need to readdress where we came Absolutely. from and the history. Well, you just talk about the history. People, what people do forget too, that is soccer, and I'm still trying to work out when soccer became a nasty word and we couldn't use it, that's just bizarre. The same as being an ethnic club is wrong, apparently. It's all, it's all lost on me, too, I just don't understand. But anyway, what, what was the point I was trying to make, Doug? You have no idea, do you? No, no. Oh, okay, that soccer had the courage was the first code of any kind in this country, of any sport, that had the courage to set up a national Well, we're first in a number of people, don't, not only from a, a, a national league perspective, but also from a, a coaching perspective and coaching courses that were set up and all these things. So soccer was way ahead of everybody else. Unfortunately, or, you know, the people in, not the people in the city clubs, but the people who were in, in charge, uh, obviously didn't do the right thing. Imbecile. Did you say they didn't Imbecile. do the right thing or they were scared of letting go because other people out there knew a little bit more than they did? Well, I suppose it's, it's uh, you know, it's a common denominator sometimes, in, in, not only in, in, in soccer clubs or football clubs, it's a common denominator in sporting clubs, you know, in general because you find people who are very successful in business and get involved in a sporting club and they don't reciprocate or, or transfer what they're doing business to a club, there all of a sudden becomes a little uh, different uh, mentality and that way you know, it changes their perspective on the game. I, would, I, I think this is a, probably something I'd love to address with you, address with you for, on a lot, um, a, a lot broader basis, but we, unfortunately we don't have time and I'm actually fantasising in my head now that Gary Cole has come back to Melbourne and we've made friends again. And, uh, well, just to let you know, Cole, you will be in town on the 17th of March. So right, I know write that down, uh, Doug. So, so he's You're back, the name dropper. I know he's back in town because uh, he's I'm looking for you guys. He's now obviously involved with Sydney uh, Sydney Football Club, and they are playing against the Hart. And we're, as I said earlier on, we're playing a charity match prior to that game. Oh, so, so that's prior. So, so it's prior to, on the 17th. We uh, we kick off at five o'clock. You see some of the uh, former Socceroos playing against the police. It's for a charity, a police charity for oh, the two gentlemen. Fantastic. Two gentlemen that got killed a few years ago. So I'll play for the Just <laughs> so I know probably Just she'll be down and maybe having a run around as well. Well, what will happen on that night, I will sit, I'll be, I'll, because I'll be thinking of Gary and I'll be approaching him on that <laughs> night and I will say, Gary, I want to go out with you. I wanted to 30 years ago, I want to now. And when I think of taking him out, the first place I think of, Doug, where do you reckon it is? It's on the sheet, Doug. Oh, I'm so sorry, mate. Um, let's go. Hey, I can't even. It's the Coca Cabana International. International. That's Find where the premium going. restaurant nightclubs. Book your next dinner and experience a taste of Brazil in Melbourne with the music and Brazilian show. And okay. there's nothing better than tasting Brazilian, I always say. Uh, 9417, 9417, I'm happy to work blue. 9417 7099. Gary Cole and I, Copacabana International, and we'll be tasting Brazil. Can recommend it, have been there a few times with South Blakey with the club, so good spot. Food, food's yeah. nice, I've been there as well. Good spot, good spot. Taste of Brazilian, was lovely. Of Brazil. Absolutely, you can't, you can't, you Very can't good. beat it, can you? Um, Jeff, uh, uh, just on the uh, on the state of the game at the moment, in, in, in terms of um, the A League and the international teams, just from your perspective, where are we? Uh, I think um, I think in terms of soccer, it'll be it's going to be an interesting transition. I think in the next uh, probably twelve to two years, because the uh, 
the back bone, again, again, over a couple of years last night, we were talking, the guys were talking, so it would be interesting to see how they readjust when sports goes, uh, Lucas Neal goes, Cahill goes, Harry goes, um, it's got to be, you know, the, or Emerson goes, so the, uh, even Bresh, so the bulk of the squad, so I, do I think that, you know, to use a, a line from Graham Arnold, the, the golden generation's about to end, I think that's the case. So it'll be interesting to see how they readjust. Um, the golden the, generation that was fostered in the old NSL is the problem. But ask yourself though, why? Is it, yeah, it's a magical question. Why is that generation gone? Is it because the players have not gone overseas early enough and haven't been allowed to? Or the standard here is a bit disappointing and they haven't processed well, and they haven't gone through it and well, developed? I think, you know, I mean, you can sit here and dissect it for the next three days. Yeah. It's, a, it's a matter of, I think, it's a, a little bit of bugbear. There's probably more money being put into the game in any, any other period in our history in terms of institute programs. Yeah. You've got the 17s, you've got the 19s, you've got the 23s. I mean, the 23s for the first time ever haven't qualified for the Olympic Games, which which is very sad. So you then, I think it needs to be readjust, uh, readdressed and sort of say, okay, well, you know, some of the past go back to the past, some of the past is relevant to the future, yeah. so they need to look at that, whether yeah, it's, you know, whether they look at changing the coaching structure, or which they have, I mean, the coaching structure is a lot more difficult now, uh, if they're bringing in certain people from overseas, do they know our culture, do they understand our culture, so, it's, I mean, you can speak to 10 different people, get 10 different, but, you know, the, the guys like the Bresciano's and all these guys, they know more, so, but they've been through a system, though, Jeff, through internet. They've been overseas. In yeah, but they didn't system. go. I mean, uh, I mean, I was lucky enough to be involved in the Carlton Football Club uh, mm -hmm. when it started, and I was involved there for three years. The club's in, in it had a nice span of four years. I mean, this, we had Bresh coming to the AIS, so it was himself, Vinnie Grella, yep. uh, Simon Klosserman who played there. We had John Maskowski. We had a whole range of really good quality. Archer Thompson played there, you know, as a youngster. Um, so, you know, they, they had their opportunity in the old NSL and then obviously the, then the doors open for them to go overseas. Oh, you know, you've got to remember that everybody talks about um, the boy Marston was the first guy to go, then you had Craig Johnson and then you had guys like Eddie Krinchevich and all those guys and then slowly more and more went. There's a lot of people going overseas, but from what I understand, and you haven't played overseas, Doug, the, where they're going, they're going to places like Romania and and, and stuff. So Asia is the big thing now. I, mm. I was thinking about driving in. I just, I would have loved us, the group that I play with, to be in the Asian Confederation because, you know, we would have had a fair chance of maybe qualifying. I reckon we would have went all the way. Well, we would have had a, yeah, a better anyway. chance than what we had rather than play Scotland or Uruguay or Paraguay. Jeff Olver is our special guest on the locker room tonight, which is just fantastic. And uh, we're going live tonight, so we're all a bit uh, on Tinder hooks. Jeff, I just must say, Doug, I was just going to mention this too before we talk about high creative integrated systems, which we, we know are the greatest integrated systems that you're ever going to integrate with, I would have thought. Um, I'll let <laughs> you know. Integrate. <laughs> <that> well. <laughs> uh, but. <laughs> You know, the one thing about somebody, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll underscore this again, I think in terms of this locker room, um, Jeff I was the most decorated player that we've, we've had on board and we're grateful for him to make the effort, but he's such an unassuming, you, you think in the pantheon of Australian sports, in the pantheon of Australian soccer, I'm using the dirty word again, but you're just going to have to live with it because in my day it was a strong word, it was a point of difference. Anyway, that's a whole other subject. Um, Don't let him go there. What the hell am I talking about? In terms of great superstars of the game, in the, in the pantheon of our story of history. Jeff Oliver is such an unassuming superstar. Yeah, Jeff's here now, so you know what I, Jay, I, I was lucky enough to play in front of him. So I, I actually, and I've said this to Jeff before, I reckon I made a little bit of it. Because they were going past me, he had to stop them. Mm, makes so perfect sense now, Doug. So so Doug, you made me look good. I made him look good. So yeah, now that you put it in there, I, have to admit, I think we all agree. I, agree. <laughs> well, I have to admit, though, I was, uh, it was an honour to play in front of Jeff. Yeah. You know, Australian you know, goalkeeper, and he was a great, not saying because he's a great goalkeeper. Yeah. I learned a lot from Jeff to, you know, working as a kid. But I used to call his, who do you think he looks like? Now, this is, who do you think he looks like? Years ago. Now, I know a very good martial artist. Martial arts expert. I'm Do you think he looks like Chucky Norris or not? Chucky Norris. He used to have the old he's, big tash. Yeah, he was Chucky Norris. He was. But on a serious note, it was an honour to play in front of Jeff, and I have to admit, Jeff, we had some great, we had some good luck. Oh, well, we had. I mean, we had some good teams, and this is set back to you know the camaraderie and the players you played with, yeah. and you know we were very, 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 very competitive. And again, you know, Hyderabad was a 
the long-term plans for you, you went over to Perth and as I say, the rest is history. Um, I did I mention this before? I think it's pertinent now. It's really relevant to what we're discussing in a not-so-relevant way, but in terms of awkward segues, that was one. I created integrated systems. Now, you might be wondering, scratching your head there, sitting at the computer, scratching your head, I'll explain it to you. They specialise in web design. Now you're starting to understand, aren't you, computer nerd, wasting your time in front of the computer? Yes, I created integrated systems specialising in web design. Uh, graphic design and computer system engineering. So now it's becoming relevant. So whereas I started out awkwardly and stumbled along, Doug, now I've got a link. We're back. Yes. Uh, so if you need to refresh your website, ring Stacy on. Is it Stacy? Somebody help me out. Stace. 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 We're looking for Stace. 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 Uh, no disrespect. This is the most poorly worded advertising thing, yeah. and blame our creative producer over there. Um, Nick, this is just like what you might teach four. a monkey to print better than this. O That's why I couldn't read it before. No, no, we this O four double one zero nine double eight three six. O four double one zero nine double eight three six. You want the web? You want to change? You want some graphics? Not the other graphics you were watching before this show, <laughs> but the new graphics. Ring Stace. She's waiting for your call. Yeah, and that's, that, that was really well done, Doug. And you took it, you were assertive as well. I appreciate that. Try that so it was good. I'm the co-host. I've got to make skirting. Around. He's been skirting around the packs for too long. Okay. So we'll just reiterate again, and we are actually genuinely grateful. We are hoping that we're going to build um, something really significant and lasting, particularly with these interviews with, with great champions of the club over the journey. Um, TJ Financial Consultants, EPDM Commercial, uh, Copacabana International, my personal favourite, um, because I'm a sucker for a Brazilian. And what about you, Dave? Love Brazilian. Thought you might. I creative integrated systems and, of course, Boost Juice in Doncaster. I'm a Boost as well. So we thank them all for, for their contribution. Um, Jeff, just one other thing before we wrap it up, because we're really running out of time. I've just got to get some idea about this shirt, too, because it's Doug's, as you, if you're watching, it's Doug's shirt of the week. In fact, we'll do shirt of the week. Shirt shirt. Of, this, this is the new one. This is, I think I'm it's a, actually burning my retinas. It's very bright. Well, it has the eyes on it. Have you got a pair of sunglasses? Well? Sunglasses yeah. in there, they'll pee -pee's a little pee-pees like that. Now, I actually messed up, because I've wore, going back, I had the same with Jeff before, I've had the Victorian shirt, the Western Australian, the Victorian, and it should be in a bit of a sequel. So, last nice. week I had the Burn Burnley one on, you so did. I've gone back, now this one here, I got swapped this shirt mm -hmm. by when Sheffield United versus um, Western Australia. This shirt got swapped from a gentleman called Brian Gale, which is a, it's the real one that the last... Brian Gale played for Wimbledon, he's part of the crazy gang, Gale. He was also club captain of Sheffield United for six years. So this is Gale's original shirt, which was when they were in the Premier League in 1993. So this is where this one comes, the old sponsor was Labor. He was the bloke who does a bit of Renault's work. And just going back, finishing on a very professional manner, this is. <laughs> Gailey and I went to Sheffield United, 97, 96, 97, Brian was leaving. So I had a weak yellow card, and the guffer pulled me in his office. He said, Dave, I'm gonna leave you out the last game. We're gonna let Brian Gale play bye-bye to 30 odd thousand people. No worries, bosser. Go for no drama at all. So I decided my season was over. Being a very professional man, I've decided I've done no drinking for six weeks. I thought I'd go and have a little gargle. Oh, so so what happened was, after eight days <laughs> of being on a bender <laughs> and going out every night, by the way, at this stage, though, Jeff, season was finished last game. We were only training three days a week because the season was over. Couldn't go up, couldn't go down, we finished eight. So I came in the night before, and they, um, they turn around and Bill Busby says, Doug, he says, uh, don't go out tonight. This is assistant. So boys out, he says, there's a fair chance that you could play tomorrow. I went, Buzz, I've been on the turfs for eight days. This is not good. He says, Roger Nelson, the legend knows he's going to throw one in. So he twisted still in a stock, stock and that, that was it. So I'm on there. Gailey's on the bench when Gailey was meant to play. And here's me after 20 minutes, face was redder than this shirt. <laughs> Blood pressure's going through the head. Boys are laughing in the cup. We got 1-1 one, one and Gailey going on to play. So every time I go back to the UK, I see Mr Gale. And he's a lovely gentleman. He's a very big boy, six foot four. And um, he ran through a few people playing as a tough centre half. <laughs> he, was, he was up there with the best of them. Even Vinnie Jones, I'd like to see go toe to toe. <laughs> so Gailey, this is Brian's shirt. No, it's a very memorable one though. Next week, stay tuned for a different shirt. I love this Dougie shirt of the week. There's a sippy behind every shirt. There's a story. Before we leave it tonight, Jeff, and I was just, uh, 
again, just underscore how grateful we are. That, that well, I appreciate, I appreciate the invitation, guys. And uh, what an enormous thrill it is for me for, for, for so many reasons. But just quickly, you, you keep uh, mentioning last night. Now, you were, uh, what, what happened last night? And, Awesome. I remember you, know, you were talking about... Yeah, we, well, we, as you said, uh, there's been some advancement with the FFA in regards to soccer. So we're lucky enough to get offered two tickets for every game that obviously Australia played. It, it was so if Australia played in Brisbane, we get offered the tickets and, and so on. So we were lucky enough to be invited last night to Amy Stadium and up on the second level. So the second level is quite... Uh, it's like the, I suppose where a lot of the corporate boxes are. So we were up there last night and there, there were an invitation to come before the game, there was some finger food on and then there was a whole array of different guys from, from different eras, you know. Um, Just peel off some of the names. Name you drop, J.O., come on. Well, some of the boys there last night, uh, Theo Salamuz was there. Superstar. Fausto Dimitris, John Mark, Superstar. John, Superstar. John Mark Koski was there. Uh, so I generally said to you earlier, uh, Mindo Rostovsky, the old footscray just Mindo player, little midfield, Superstar. Good, good player. Andrew Zini was there. Um, Danny Anastasiadis, John Anastasiadis was there, uh, Joe Spateri was there, Danny Tiado was there, so, and then you've got uh, Ted Smith, he's a former uh, 56 Olympian, he was there, uh, Frankie uh, Boyce played with the Footscray, just um, Frankie Urich, uh, I think his name was, uh, Hammy McMeekin was there, former Australian, so there was a whole range of so it was really good to get together. We had a couple of quiet beers, a little bit of finger food put on, and then sit and watch the game, and and then talk about you know how good we used to be. With every, you see, you're saying that Tony Tony and Cheek do, but I'll, uh, look, if I'm not I'm not sure what you can get on YouTube. I know you can get some real. I did this ten funny trampoline accidents at work today, and I nearly wet my pants. But anyway, that's beside the point. I am sure, and they are really funny. Um, <laughs> But um, what was my point? My point being that, uh, Jeff, before we, before we leave, before we leave the, the show for the night, I'm just going to say again, for all of those people that dismiss the old NSL as old and irrelevant and, and, and didn't exist and we have to scrape it under the carpet, you're full of shit. All of you. All of you. Okay? Because Jeff and I were just in, in a heartbeat, reeled off a whole lot of names of some absolute superstars. If you didn't see them, you missed out. You missed out. I saw them. Dougie saw them. Jeff played with them. And we really need to start in knowledge. The yeah. <laughs> At the Copa Grande. <laughs> um, and uh, see, now you've thrown me off. Sorry, I was about I'm to go into a last second rant. Don't worry about it, Doug. You've just killed the whole rhythm of the show again. Jeff, you're, you're a champion. I, I hope we've crossed paths again. I'll bring the rhythm back, though. I've got it to finish off. Jeff Oliver, guys, J.O., Chucky Norris, Victorian superstar, Heidelberg superstar, Australian international superstar. He is here live. To see you guys. Brilliant. Great, J.O. Thanks very much for the invitation, guys, and uh, good luck for the uh, rest of the year with your show. Thanks, J.O.